Hello fantastic people, I hope you're doing great. Today we'll learn how to change levels in Metroidvania-like style. So let's assume you have different levels. For example, here I have three different scents, one looking like that, second one like that, and third one pretty similar to the previous one. And now I would like my character to be able to exit um, the level using any of those exits and move to one of those levels and then what's important I want the player to be able at any point to come back um, to the previous level and I would like the system to be configurable so basically I don't want to have to write any code anytime I am adding new exit or something so we'll learn how to create system like that I hope you will enjoy it okay so let me tell you the general idea of what we'll do Basically, we'll create um, empty objects for each exit and we'll assign the colliders to them. That way, when the character collides with that thingy, we'll teleport the character to the new level. What we'll actually do is we'll load new level and based on some stuff, we'll decide where the character should be placed. Now, the trickiest part here is that in each level, we can have multiple exits. So, for example, in this level, we have two exits. So when we go from level like that back to the level with two exits, we have to know which one to use. And for that, we need a clever way, clever way of mapping them together. And in this case, we'll be using um, scriptable objects. If you don't know what scriptable objects are, what are their capabilities, what they can do, what they cannot, don't worry at all because today's use case will be very, very simple. Basically, um, all you need to know today is that when you create a scriptable object, it's maybe, let's go for a second to the code. Let's create um, scriptable objects for that connection there. So for this mapping, let's call it level connection. Awesome. And when we create um, script using Unity, usually it extends mono behavior, right? So it would be something like that. However, this time, because we don't want it to be mono behavior, we want it to be scriptable object, we just change this mono behavior to scriptable object. And on top of that, what we can do, um, we can add attribute called create asset menu. Mm, it has some parameters, for example, file name or menu name. Let's use the menu name. And we'll, you'll see what it does in a second. So let's say mm, levels and connection, for example. And now what will happen? Mm, basically, scriptable objects are special because Usually when you have a class in programming, right, you can create instances of them. And when you create those instances, you can store them in variables and, and so on and so on. Scriptable objects are special because they allow you to create instances of those scriptable objects, so level connections, literally using um, the Unity editor. So for example, here I have already created folder for scriptable objects because I added this create asset menu, I can just click right mouse button of create, you see levels and, ah, sorry, create levels and connection. And the new object is created and let's call it level one to level two, for example, right? And this way, mm, you see, I have something like a value that I can place in a variable. So for example, let's create quickly a um, base for our object that will, the script that will be responsible for transporting a player from one place to the other. So let's call it level changer, for example. And now this one will have to be mono behavior because we'll want to assign it to something and we create a variable. So serialized field, private um, of type level connection, well, not changer, connection, and call it connection, for example, like that, right? So the beautiful thing about it is that now, if we have the script, I'm just creating empty object, call it level 
changer. For now, let's do not worry about where it is. I'm adding the component. Mm, TDD, what was the name of the script? Level changer, yes. So I added the level changer and you see I have this mm, connection variable exposed. So I can drag and drop things there. Um, normally like with every other um, script. But the special thing is now because we created this instance of the scriptable object, what I can do, I can literally just drag and drop it here. So this way, I know that the connection here is level one, level two, and for example, in the level, uh, sorry, stems here. In level two, I can also create a level changer, add the level changer script, and drag exactly the same scriptable object there. What it does for me, it's basically um, keeping the same value. So now when I compare them with each other, I can easily say, um, use the connection or use the level changer that use the same connection. I hope it's clear. If not, please let me know in the comment. I will try to explain it better. It turns out that as a part of the explanation, I have done already a lot of work. So let's get back to our um, level connection script. No, to our level changer. And obviously we'll need some more information here. So the first one will be information about the scene we want to load. And let's store its name in the string variable. So let's call it target scene name. Awesome. Then we'll also need one more serialized variable, this time for transform, and let's call it spawn point. Let me tell you a little bit about the spawn point. Okay, let's go back to the first level and let's have a look at our level changer. First, obviously, we need to add to add the collider 2D. Let's go with the box collider. Let's set it here. And let's adjust its size. Awesome. But now mm, we have to know where to spawn our character, right? So when the character, let's just start the mm, game for a second. So when the character walks to the Mm, collider, right? Awesome. When we collide, we want to transform, uh, transport the character to another stand. But when he appears, we want it, we want him like to be in the good place, right? So we want to know where this good place is, and it is not in the middle of the um, of the collider. That wouldn't make any sense. So in order to keep mm, track of this position, we just add another empty object under it, let's call it a spawn point and let's assign to it um, a dot icon and let's move it for example here. And now let's go to our level changer and assign everything that we know about um, this level changer. So we know it's spawn point and we know the name of the level we want to be moved to and that will be level two. Let's do the same thing. Um, we could turn it actually into prefab. Yes, so let's actually clear the variables for now. And let's turn this level changer into the prefab. Awesome. And now let's assign the values. This, then level two and then connection is the connection we created now let's get back to the level two to create the same thing so let's use our actually i think we can go to the prefab and we can assign the spawn point as the spawn point. So this way we won't have to save it for every single one. Like we won't have to set it. This will be always automatically set for us. So here let's drag 
and drop it, level changer, awesome, let's adjust its position and now let's just move the spawn point to another side. Awesome, that should do it, now let's fill the other fields, so level 1 and connection, the same connection uh, we used uh, in the previous level changer. Let's save it and now we have to write some code. So. In our level changer, when the collision occurs, so on collision mm, enter 2D, we want to do some magic, right? So first thing we want to do mm, is to load the level, right? We do that using the send manager class. There is this beautiful mm, method called load scene and we can give it just the name of the scene and this will work. So this will load the other scene. Let's remove this one, we don't need that. But now we have to know how to place the character, right? Where to place the character. And for that, for that we need to know where is the spawn point of the relevant um, level changer. For that, we somehow need to know in the level we load what connection was part of the level changer we are using. And this will be a little bit tricky. So what we can do in the level connection um, scriptable object, we can create static variable of type level connection. And let's call it active connection. Let's make it property. Awesome. Basically what static will do in this case mm, will ensure that this field is not cleared when we change sense. So whatever we set it in the level one, that will stay uh, for the level two too. So let's go back to level changer. And before we do that, so before we load this one, let's set the level connection dot active connection to this specific connection that we store in the variable. Now, uh, the reason we call it like from the class level, right? So not the um, like connection dot active connection, but the class name is because it's static. And when something is static, it is not tied to a particle instance, but rather to the whole class. So it's like shared among other um, objects. If you want to learn more about it, somewhere there will appear a link to the tutorial about statics. And this will be okay. Let's just ensure that this happens just for the player. So let's create a variable player and let's get the script component from the collider. So player. Mm, so basically what is happening here uh, from other, so from the information about collision, I'm grabbing the collider and that also keeps the information about the actual game object that I collided with uh, or that collided with this particular level changer. And now what I do, I try to get the player script from it and get component work such a way that if there is no script like that, it returns null. So I can use this information, so player not null, to determine if the object that collided with the level changer is player or not. So basically if it would if it wouldn't be player, this variable would be null. So if it's not null, it's player. Awesome. Yes. So we have that. So now we need to actually spawn the player in the right position. For that, we'll use the start method. Awesome. We have the start method and inside of it we check if the connection of this particular level changer that is running the script, so it will run at the beginning of the sun for all the um, level changers there. If they have the connection, that is the active connection, right? So if this is true, that means this is the level changer that should spawn the player. And then we just find the player 
Now, there are better ways to do that, uh, but I don't want to go to too much detail because uh, this is not really that relevant for this tutorial. Um, if you have pretty small game, this will work fine. Um, otherwise, you can, for example, store player in the, in the variable or something like that. Find object of type player. Now, set it position to spawn point. Whoops, spawn point position. Beautiful. And seriously, that's all we need. If we save it now, go to Unity Editor. Let's open the first scene. Let's start a game. And this should work. Yay, you see we appeared here. When we move, we are in the right place. Awesome, everything works as expected. Now, we have just one level changer, so let's quickly create another one. I'm just copying it, moving it over here, moving the, uh, sorry, moving the spawn point to the other side. Now, change it to level three. I will also need new connection, so I'm going to my scriptable objects folder, creating new connection, call it level one to level three. Yes, that's right. Here I drag and drop it. Everything's look, everything looks all right, then save it. Go to level three. Here I drag and drop the level changer, move it a little bit, awesome. I want to transport us to level one and we need to assign the connection. So is it the right one? It is the right one. So now let's start the game and see what's happening. So yay. Everything seems to work fine. Beautiful. So, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.